Surprise, surprise, my friends, we are back this season, not just one episode of the Bacon Bets podcast each week, but two. This is not the Road to 272 Bets episode. I released that earlier this week. If you're looking for my best bet for all 16 NFL Week 1 games, check out that episode that was released uh, earlier this week. Uh, This season, I'm going to do two shows. People message me all the time. They're in the comments asking for my best player props or if I'd include player props in the road to 272 bets. I tried to do that last year, but the issue is because I record that Monday night, uh, so it's available for people to listen to when they wake up Tuesday morning, player props aren't available. They're not posted at sportsbooks that early in the week. So I could not include player props in the road to 272 bets. So this year, I'm doing two shows. One that I'll record Monday night, release Tuesday morning, which is the road to 272 bets, my best uh, side total or money line pick for all 16 games. And then Wednesday night, I will record to release Thursday morning my top 10 prop bets. I'm going to call them my player prop countdown. Uh, So I'm not going to do one player prop for every single game. That's just a little bit too much for me to deal with, but I'm still going to give you 10 every single week. So, I mean, there are going to be some weeks uh, in the middle of the season. Once we get into buys, it's going to be almost one play per game. Uh, I will start from uh, my least confident play all the way up to my most confident player prop bet uh, of the week. So those will be recorded Wednesday night, released Thursday morning. This is the week one edition of the player prop ga- countdown. Like I said, if you want the road to 272, go ahead and listen to that. That was uh, released uh, earlier this week. Um, welcome, friends. Football's back. Uh, by the time you're listening to this, we will have a football game to watch tonight. I'm going to ask you before tonight's kickoff, sign up for my Survivor League uh, over on Splash Sports. Go to splashsports.com slash bacon bets. You can also find the link to that in the description, both of the video version of this podcast and the audio version. $25 buy-in. You can have up to three entries max. Winner take all. Battle me in Survivor. Um so yeah, I think you can still enter it up until kickoff on Sunday. Um, so even once games start tonight, you can still enter it. Or once the game starts tonight, you can still enter it. Deadline, I believe, is 1 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. So sign up for that. We still got spots left. Splashboards.com slash bacon bets. Um, yeah, like I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through my top 10 picks, uh, my top 10 player props. I'm betting all 10 of them. I will track them. Now, the thing that I'm concerned about doing it this way, I've never been a huge player prop guy in NFL. So, uh, I mean, I have dabbled in. This is going to be fairly new for me, at least betting on 10 a week. I am concerned this is going to mess up my, <laughs> my betting record because I have had a good history of betting uh, spreads, totals, and, and money line underdogs. I've been profitable uh, across five of uh, the four seasons that I've done it. Uh, I am afraid I toss in player props into the mix and then I'm going to be, you know, down a ton of money at the, at the end of the season. Because if I do 10 a week, that's adding 180 bets. So this is risky. This this might be a one-year experiment. This might be a half a season experiment. I might drop out of this if I get really bad at this halfway through. So uh, I'm not a player prop expert, but hey, maybe I end up being better at player props. Who knows? I usually only do player props in the playoffs for the most part. I, you know, I somewhat dabble and sprinkle on some primetime games to give me some extra action. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. This is this is uncharted territory for me. 10 a week, that'll be 180 player props for the season. Who could be great. It could be uh, a disaster. But yeah, all 10 I'll be betting on. I'll be tracking them on my bet stamp account uh, as per usual with my other bets. Um, same rules apply in, in, in terms of it's, uh, all these bets are regulated sports books from New York. Uh, if I remember, I'll let you know which of these, uh, which sports books I, I bet each of these props at. Um, I am betting all 10, even though, so I'm going to count down 10 down to my favorite number one. Um, but just because, you know, the, the prop I have ranked 10 doesn't mean I don't like it. It just means of the 10, it is the one I am, uh, least, uh, confident in. Uh, and then to actually finish the show, another thing I'm going to do related to player props, I guess, is I'm going to I'm going to live make my DFS lineup for the week. That's another thing some people have asked uh, if I have any recommendations for DFS. I've not historically been a big DFS guy. That's daily fantasy for those of you who don't know. Um, I'm going to try to be. I'm going to I'm going to do it this year and make a lineup every week, and I'll I'll live make the lineup uh, on, on, on the podcast. So uh, if you if you don't watch slash listen listen to this podcast on YouTube. The DFS portion of the show uh, might be a good time to start because uh, I'm going to bring that up on the screen here so you can kind of see what I'm looking at uh, for that. But first, we are going to get through the player props. I got 10 for week one, all 10 locked in. 
I guess we'll dive into it. We will start with number 10 uh, and work our way down to number one. Uh, final reminder before we get into it, subscribe to the Bacon Bets podcast on YouTube, rate and review the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. That helps me out a ton. And go back and listen to the Road to 272 week one. All right. My first player prop for week one. And these are non-chronological order, chronological order. I do Road to 272 in chronological order. These are all over the place because I'm ranking them from my least confident to my most confident. Uh, so my first one, I'm going to go Chris Godwin over 57 and a half receiving yards for the Buccaneers against the Washington Commanders. Commanders secondary was abysmal last season. 31st in opponent yards per pass attempt. So that's gave up. They gave up 7.5 yards per throw. Dead last in opponent passing yards per game, giving up 262, 262.2 passing yards per game. So that should be good news for the Buccaneers pass attack unless the commanders uh, improved in that area in the, in the off season, I don't necessarily think they did. Godwin averaged 60.2 receiving yards per game last season. That's uh, three yards more um, than his set total for this game. And also generally, I mean, I do kind of like betting Chris Godwin props because I think he has more value than Mike Evans. Mike Evans is, you know, people think that Mike Evans is a lot better than Chris Godwin than he actually is. And it's because Mike Evans scores a lot more touchdowns. Uh, but when you look at receptions and yards, pretty similar between the two receivers last year, especially in uh, targets and receptions. So I generally think there's more value on Godwin props and Mike Evans props. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do with that one. So my my 10th out of my 10 player props, Chris Godwin over 57 and a half receiving yards, minus 115. I bet that over at BetMGM, but I think that is uh, pretty general across uh, most sports books. Next up, I'm going to go with an under. I got Joe Mixon, the new running back for the Houston Texans. I'm going to go under 55 and a half rushing yards for his first game as a Texan, taking on the Indianapolis Colts. I talked about this in my season preview episode where I gave out my best futures bet for every team. And I believe my best futures bet for Houston was Joe Mixon to go under his season long rushing yards total because I'm not a Joe Mixon guy, especially as a rusher. He had, if you look at his yards per carry numbers the past handful of years, uh, they haven't been good. He only averaged 4.0 yards per carry last season in Cincinnati. Only 60.8 rushing yards per game in Cincinnati. And he was the primary back. Um, I don't think he's going to be the bell cow, the primary back for the Houston Texans. I think he's he's going to be the starter. I think they're going to utilize him more um, as a receiving back. But I, I do think Damian Pierce is going to get some carries. I think Cam Akers might get some carries. I think we may see a little bit more of a running back by committee in Houston uh, than some people expect. Um, Texans also not a good running team. Now, was that because the running backs last year like Damian Pierce? Or was that a sign of their offensive line being more of a passing uh, pass blocking offensive line than run blocking. Don't know. We'll find out because they were 29th in the NFL in yards per carry last season. And now they go up against a Colts team, which was top 10 in run defense. So I think this is a bad matchup for Mixon. I'm not a Mixon guy in general. I think Mixon's going to have not as good of a year as some people expect. So I will start things off um, for uh, for Mixon this season with an under 55 and a half rushing yards bet uh, for their season opener in Indianapolis. I only have one plus money prop. Uh, most of these, I guess all these prop bets this week are all over under yards and, and you know, stats. I didn't do any like big touch, anytime touchdown scores, which I, which I certainly could do in the future. Um, so I only have one plus money prop for week one. I feel like I kind of need to see the schemes and the game plans of these different teams before I really bet touchdown scores. I think touchdown scores is extremely tough in week one. Um, so this is a plus money bet for you though. Uh, Cortland Sutton over four and a half receptions plus 125, the Denver Broncos. I feel like Cortland Sutton is, is, is kind of being a, a, a forgotten guy this, this year. Uh, I snagged him late in a couple of my fantasy football drafts that I've done, uh, leading into the season. Don't forget with Jerry Judy now in Cleveland, it's Cortland Sutton for the Broncos receiving core. Uh, who are the other receivers? Let me bring it up here. Not good. Uh, at least last year, they had, to, they had to split some targets up between uh, Sutton and Jerry Judy. This year, it is Sutton and Marvin Mims and Josh Reynolds. Um, not great. I think Sutton's going to be the clear offensive weapon uh, and target for Bo Nix. And as I've talked about now in a couple of podcasts, I, for some reason, uh, am a Bo Nix believer. Is that going to come bite me in the ass? Almost guaranteed. Um, but hey, let, let Bo Nix sling it. 
Let him sling it. Um, Seahawks secondary also, by the way, that's their weakness. That's probably the worst part of the Seahawks uh, team. 25th in opponent completions per game last season. 26th in opponent completion percentage. So a lot of completions. Sutton's the main target. Let Bo Nick sling it. We're getting plus money at over four and a half receptions. If he gets five, we're laughing. So Cortland Sutton over four and a half receptions plus 125 is number eight. Moving on to number seven. Dak Prescott in Cleveland against the Browns under 249 and a half passing yards at minus 114 at FanDuel. This goes back to my theory about the Cleveland Browns. You guys heard me talk about it uh, on the road to 272 and not enough other people are talking about it. I, I, I might be like, you know, at the forefront of this Browns conspiracy theory. I talked about how fewer yards per snap the Browns allowed at home. I think it was like 2.1 fewer yards per snap at home compared to on the road last season. Their defensive numbers at home, by far the best in the NFL. Their defensive numbers on the road, like bottom 10. I may have even narrowed it down even further because if you look at their rush defense, yes, better at home, but not a crazy amount. If you look at their pass defense, Teams had a 5.3% lower completion percentage against Cleveland when playing in Cleveland, and also 3.2 fewer yards per pass attempt last season. So if you were throwing the ball against the Browns and you were playing at home, you'd get 3.2 more yards per throw, not per completion, per throw than you would if you played in Cleveland. Also, their amount of opponent pass um, opponent yards per throw at home, uh, which was only four yards per throw, 1.1 yards better than the next best team at home. A full over, a full yard fewer better than the next best pass defense at home. Something's going on in Cleveland, and maybe it's a one-season thing. Maybe they stopped doing it this year. I don't want to use the word cheating Something's going on with that Cleveland defense, specifically in their pass defense when playing at home. Those numbers are way too crazy, a home and away splits. Now, this might be a tinfoil hat. They might be fine this season. Things might just even out this season. But if it comes out, if some report comes out that Cleveland's been cheating in some way at home, you heard it here first. I'm going to continue to trust that theory that I've cooked up like a conspiracy theorist. And I will take my number seven prop bet is Dak Prescott under 249 and a half passing yards. I will say about Prescott, he is averaging 23.1 fewer passing yards per game on the road compared to at home in his career. So he historically has not put up the numbers uh, on the road compared to uh, when he's playing in his home field. That should help us out a little bit. So I'll, I'll, I will need him to, to stay under 250 passing yards and we're laughing. Uh, moving on to number six. Uh, this is another um, passing yards under. Um, and we're going to skip all the way over to Monday Night Football. And we are going to go uh, with Aaron Rodgers under 235 and a half passing yards for my number six player prop. I don't have a ton of backing. Maybe I should have put this higher than six or lower than six. I, I guess it depends on what way you look at it. But I'm just not an Aaron Rodgers believer. I've harped on this all season. I've been screaming it at the mountaintops. His last good season was three years ago now. Two years ago in Green Bay, he stunk, to be completely honest. Last year in New York, he made th four passes and then tore his Achilles. And now he's returning as a 40-year-old with a torn Achilles. And people think he's going to throw for 236 or more passing yards in week one. Against a 49ers defense, it only allowed 221.1 passing yards per game last season. Only six yards per throw last season, the fifth fewest. Um, so he would have to throw 15 more yards than the 49ers gave up in an average game last season. I don't see it. I might be the number one biggest Jets hater in the world or Death Jets non-believer in the world. And I'm, hey, if I'm right, great. If I'm wrong, I guess I'm going to die on that hill. I don't see Aaron Rodgers having a big game on Sunday. Or sorry, on Monday night. I'll take Aaron Rodgers under... 235 and a half passing yards at minus 114. Uh, we're going to go back to an over now. We're going to go to rushing yards over, and we're going to go back to Sunday afternoon. It is um, the Cardinals and the Bills, and this is my number five player prop. I'm going to go James Conner over 50 and a half rushing yards. 
So despite the Bills winning the AFC East last season, they did have one glaring weakness. That weakness was their ability to stop the run. They ranked 29th in the NFL last year in opponent yards per rush attempt. They gave up 4.7 yards per carry. I don't think the Bills did enough this offseason to fix that issue that they had in their run defense. Um, and the Cardinals, a little bit of an underrated rushing attack, by the way. James Connors, Connor is why am I is it Connor or Connors? Why do I have in one spot Connor and the other spot Connors? James Connors. How do I know? It is just Connor. I don't know why in my notes I, I called him Connors once. Uh, James Connor totaled 1,040 yards on the ground in just 13 games last season. Tough look, Ian. Uh, averaged 80 yards per game, 5.0 yards per carry. So his rushing yards total for week one against the Bills is 30 yards fewer than he averaged last season. To be honest, I put this at number five. I might like this bet even better than number five. Maybe this should be number four or number three. Uh, so actually earlier in the week, this total was 56 and a half. It's gone down six yards for some reason. Don't know why. Um, James Conner, another guy that I'm high on. Got him in with some fantasy leagues. Also might be a DFS play later. We'll see. So average 80 yards per game last season. Gets to now play against a Bills team who can't stop the run. And his rushing yards total is 30 yards lower than he averaged last season at 50 and a half. Love this play. James Conner over 50 and a half rushing yards. Moving on to number four, if you're watching this on video, you see I got my Falcons jersey on. You see that I got my Falcons, my new Falcons bucket hat on, which is a glorious hat, by the way. Thank you. Go ahead and leave the, a comment about how great my hat is because I know it's unbelievable. Um, I'm wearing a Kirk Cousins jersey. This is not a Kirk Cousins prop bet, though. I'm going to go with Bijan Robinson. Over three and a half receptions, minus 115 at FanDuel. Reports have come out all offseason that uh, the Falcons are going to use Bijan Robinson in a Christian McCaffrey-esque role. To me, that means more receptions. To me, that means using him as a receiver out of the backfield. I also make that I think that makes sense when they don't really have um, a ton of options at wide out. Drake London, the clear number one, and then Darnell Mooney, number two. Like It's not like they have a two-headed monster out at wide out. Obviously, they have Kyle Pitts, who we're all hoping bounce back. Uh, bounces back this season and has a good year but um, I think almost by necessity they need to use Bijan Robinson over the backfield quite a bit and also last year he averaged 3.4 receptions per game so he we just need him to hit uh, slightly over I guess his season average for this bet to hit um, and all reports have been coming out that he's going to be used like a Christian McCaffrey Christian McCaffrey catches a ton of balls so um, my bet for the Falcons player prop uh, for week one is Bijan Robinson to go over three and a half receptions at minus 115. That's what a lot of these bets are, are kind of, you know, feelings I have about players and how their seasons are going to pan out. And I'm trying to bet them before the market adjusts. Because um, these kinds of bets, in my opinion, I mean, if I'm right, I mean, I'm obviously going to be wrong at least about a few of them. But in these types of bets, I mean, for the Robinson one, for example, if he starts being used like Christian McCaffrey, it won't take long before his reception yard, his reception total is at four and a half, maybe even five and a half. Um, so I think now is the time to kind of take advantage of these types of things as early in the year. Uh, my number three player prop for week one. This one is ugly. You guys are going to laugh at this one. Um, I secretly love it. I mean, it is my it is my number three favorite player prop of week one. We're going to Cincinnati. We're not betting on a bangle. We're betting on a member of the Patriots offense. Which I was in a fantasy draft the other day, and I, I'm sure if you did uh, fantasy drafts, uh, you know, the past couple of weeks as well, you might have noticed that the Patriots offense is so bad um, that their number one receiver is like not getting drafted in some drafts. Or I think in mine, he was like one of the last picks of the draft, Demario Douglas, their top receiver. Not a good sign. With that being said, give me Jacoby Bursett over 202 passing yards, minus 114. Yeah. That's ugly. We're going to bet on the Patriots quarterback to go over his passing yards total. I think 202 and a half is insulting, to be honest. Um, I obviously know the Patriots offense isn't good, but value is value. The Bengals gave up the most yards per pass attempt in the NFL last season, 7.6. They did improve their safeties a little bit. They brought back Von Bell and Geno Stone. Um, so their safeties have, have improved. I don't think their corners have improved. They, they lost uh, Chidobia Wuze. Uh, so maybe their their corners got even worse from last season. 
Uh, so we're talking about one of the worst secondaries in the NFL. We're talking about a Patriots team that's probably going to be playing from behind. So if you're playing from behind, you expect to throw the ball kind of more than you would in a tight game. Um, and Jaco Jacoby Brissett, the last season that he was a starter was in 2022 for the Browns. Um, I think he started 11 games that season. He went over 202 and a half passing yards in all but one start that season. So, I mean, Jacoby Brissett, certainly not an elite quarterback probably not even you wouldn't even really want him as a starter but he slings it um he's not a guy that who you know only gets like 150 yards when he starts now he might turn the ball over he might not be the most efficient passer uh but he he's racked up yards I, actually in his career he has averaged 208.2 passing yards per game when he starts that's six yards over his set total for this game so I actually loki love this bet are the patriots gonna win who knows probably not but I think Jacoby Brissett, at least maybe even in garbage time, can go over 202 and a half passing yards. We'll see. It's an ugly bet. I get it. But that, you know, it's it's so crazy. It might just work. Uh, my number two prop bet for week one. Uh, we're going Thursday night. So uh, if you're listening, you're going to have to listen to this uh, the, the day of that it gets released. Um, I'm probably mostly going to stick to weekend games when I do these because uh, I want to give some people some time. And, you know, if you listen to it Sunday, still have some plays. Uh, but this is a little this, this is a little sneaky one for those of you who uh, are listening to this uh, the day that it gets released. Um, this is a niche one, too. We're going to go Justice Hill over 15 and a half rushing yards. So that is, yes, that is the backup running back for the Ravens. The Ravens, in recent years, have used a running back by committee approach. Now, most of the running backs get hurt, so they're almost forced to. Um, but they have not, at least in my memory, in the John Harbaugh uh, era, have been a one running back guy. They split carries. Um, I would be surprised if they uh, run 30-year-old Derrick Henry into the ground on opening night. I think they obviously want to conserve him a little bit. He's certainly a little bit past his prime. He only has so many miles left. I don't think they're going to use him like Tennessee did, where in Tennessee they just handed the ball to Derrick Henry 25 times a game. I, I mean, I could be wrong. I don't really have anything to back this up outside of the fact the Ravens have historically been a running back by committee team. Um, and then when you look at the other running backs for the Ravens, uh, Rash Rasheen Ali is doubtful. Keaton Mitchell is out. So that leaves, that leaves Justice Hill. I don't know why the graphic just went off. I clicked something when I slammed the table and the graphic disappeared. Um, that leaves Justice Hill as the only other guy that I think can get carries in this game. Unless Rasheen Ali, who is doubtful, plays. It's Derrick Henry and Justice Hill. We only need him to get 16 yards. That's it. If he can get 16 yards, this bet cashes. Um, I kind of want to actually go Derrick Henry under, but Derrick Henry is good enough. He could break a couple and, and go over his rushing yards total. I thought it was a little high. I think change of pace, get Justice Hill in there, give him the ball a couple times. If he gets 16 yards, perfect. And also, don't forget the Chiefs' run defense might be the weakest part of their game. Gave up 4.4 yards per rush last season. Ravens didn't run the ball in the AFC Championship and lost them. I expect them to learn from their mistake and run the ball a little bit more uh, this time around. Um, so I'll take Justice Hill over 15 and a half rushing yards. Uh, and then my favorite player prop for week one. Number one, people are not going to like this one. People might call me a hater, but hear me out. I'm going to go the rookie. The number one overall pick, Caleb Williams, under his passing yards total. It is ridiculously high. If I can figure out how to fix this graphic for the video, people. Nope, you're not going to have a graphic. It's, I don't know what I did. It is um, Caleb Williams under 245 and a half passing yards. Um, that's an extremely high total for a rookie making his first start in his career. 245 and a half passing yards. I'm trying to fix this graphic. It's just not going to work. Whatever. Um, Titans only allowed 227.4 passing yards per game last season, and quietly Texans have built one of the best secondaries in the NFL. They traded for Legereus Sneed from the Chiefs. They signed Chidobe Awuze from the Bengals. They got Quandre, Quandre Diggs from the Seahawks at safety. This Titans secondary is going to be nasty. I think the Titans defense as a whole is going to surprise a lot of people this year. Their secondary is specifically very good. This is not an easy matchup for Caleb Williams in his first week, despite what people might think and say. This is going to be tough for Caleb Williams. Not only 
is this his first start in the NFL. Not only is he learning a new offensive scheme, not only are his teammates on offense also new to this scheme with it being a new offensive coordinator. Now that he has to go against a Titans defense that looks very different than it did last year, specifically in the secondary. That is a tall order for Caleb Williams. I'll take the under. I mean, Bears could still win this game. Caleb Williams could still have a solid game. Don't forget the passing yards total is 245 and a half. He could throw for two touchdowns and 225 yards and complete 60% of his passes. People praise him. They they win the game. Perfect. 245 and a half is not a low total for passing yards. I don't think he can reach that against this defense. I, I'll, I'll take under. I love that bet. I think that bet, I think that, well, it's my, it's my number one. It's my number one bet on the board. Caleb Williams under 245 and a half passing yards. Um, so there you go. Those are my top 10. Just to count them down from 10 down to number one. And I, on my notes, I have them out of order. So we'll see if I can do this efficiently. Chris Godwin over 57 and a half receiving yards um, is number 10. Joe Mixon under 55 and a half rushing yards is number nine. Number eight is Cortland Sutton, Sutton over four and a half receptions plus 125. Seven is Dak Prescott under 249 and a half passing yards minus 114. Six is Aaron Rodgers under 235 and a half passing yards minus 114. Five is uh, James Conner over 50 and a half rushing yards minus 110. Four is Bijan Robinson over three and a half receptions at minus 115. Three is Jacoby Brissett over 202 and a, 200. And two, 200, 202 and a half passing yards. Ooh, minus 114. Two is Justice Hill, over 15 and a half rushing yards on Thursday night. And then finally, the last one, my favorite, Caleb Williams, under 245 and a half passing yards. All right, let's do some DF, uh, DFS here. If you're just listening to this, you may want to watch this on YouTube because um, I'm going to, I brought it up here. Uh, this is a pool. I got a ticket to enter some pool, so I'm just going to use this lineup just to enter that and then I'll do, a, I'll enter in a, in a different pool with this lineup. But I am going to use whatever lineup I choose now. Quarterback. Quarterback is always tricky. Do you want to spend the money on an expensive guy? I don't necessarily, dude, what if we went with Jacoby Brissett? I mean, I kind of went all in to Jacoby Brissett in this episode. Listen, if you want to win big money in DFS, you have to take crazy shots if you're going to enter big pools. Obviously, your strategy for entering big pools is a lot different than entering uh, small pools. Small pools, you know, I probably wouldn't go Jacoby Brissett. If, but if you want to make a unique lineup that's going to stand out, I mean, Kirk Cousins, 6,100, stare me in the face. Um, Jacoby Brissett, Jacoby Brissett, 5,100. Give me Jacoby Brissett. This lineup's going to be wild. Uh, running back, B. John Robinson. I already told you I like his over on his receptions. I would not pay 6,800 for a chain. We, I mean, Raheem Moser is still technically the starter there. So I don't know if anyone would want to, uh, do that. Uh, Joe Mixon definitely would not take him. We're going to take an expensive guy. We're going to go Bijan for the Falcons. Uh, second running back, we got to go probably someone a little bit cheaper. Um, who does not have, ooh, James Conner. Where, where's James Conner? Am I going to have to pay up for him? 6,200. What's my average budget remaining? 5,300. I don't care. We're going to go, we're going to go James Conner there. All right. The cheapest is always defense because then my average remaining player is going to be more accurate. So let's go. I'm going to go Tennessee defense. After all, I just talked about the Tennessee defense, $2,800 with that secondary. <laughs> Receiver, I would not go CD Lamb considering he's playing in Cleveland and they cheat at home, possibly, allegedly. Um, is Jamar Chase even playing? Don't know that yet. Chris Godwin. I mean, I'm seeing now that my DFS plays are going to be largely based off my player props. I mean, why wouldn't they? Chris Godwin at 5,800 instead of Mike Evans at 7,300. Easy. 
Absolutely. We're going to have to get some 5,600. So I, I got to get a cheap guy here. Who do I like? That, who, Demario Douglas? I mean, it makes too much sense, right? Double up on the Patriots offense. One of the most insane moves of all time, but what? it's so crazy, it might just work. Demario Douglas, a top receiver for the Patriots, 4,800. Sure. Um, who else do we want to receive or we need a relatively cheap option? Uh, Cortland Sutton. Yes. 5,600 easy tight end. We're going to have, we're going to have to go somewhat cheap. Well, no tight ends are kind of cheap to begin with. Uh, Pitts, he's playing. He tweeted that he's playing, even though he is, he has a bum hamstring. Apparently Kate Otten could be interesting. Um, I don't want to go that cheap. Evan Ingram racked up a ton of receptions for the Jaguars last year. 5,500. Yeah. Fryermuth. Arthur Smith does love, well, he doesn't love his starting tight end. He likes to, that's who I should, I should draft the Steelers backup tight end. I think I'm going to go Ingram. Uh, and then flex that leaves me 6,500 for my flex. Aaron Jones, Giants running uh, run defense stinks. Raheem Mostert could get a couple tutties. Murray Cooper, Jalen Waddle. Yeah, Drake London very tempting at six thousand. I'm going to go Aaron Jones. Now, yeah, they're going to run the ball. They're going to, yeah. Yeah, I like Aaron Jones. There you go. There's my DFS lineup. Jacoby Brissett, Bijan Robinson, James Conner, Chris Godwin, Demario Douglas, Cortland Sutton, Evan Ingram, Aaron Jones, and the Titans defense. This might be the worst DFS lineup of all time. I'm no DFS guy. I, I mean, I guess I got to learn as the season goes on. But these are just guys who I like this week. Oh, boy. Yeah. Let's go Jacoby Brissett. Ooh. Yeah. I'm going to be hearing from a few of you about how bad this is, but there we go. That's what I'm going to do. Enter. Done. All right, there you have it. This has been the Player Prop Countdown Plus DFS show. We're trying something new, my friends. We're going to come at you twice a week instead of just once. And this episode, as you can tell, is going to be a little bit shorter than the Road to 272. This is just a little, you know, a little supplement of an episode. Just give you to give you something else to chew on. Uh, please join my Survivor League pool, splashsports.com slash bacon bets. Uh, $25 buy-in, three entries max, winner take all. Splashsports.com slash bacon bets. Subscribe to the podcast, rate and review it. Subscribe to the Bacon Bets uh, YouTube channel and go and listen to the road to 272 bets if you haven't yet. Best of luck with all your picks. Leave a comment in the comment section with your best bets for this week and best player props. Gamble or bless, my friends. Week one of the NFL season is finally here. I can't wait. I can't wait to see that beautiful man, Scott Hansen, on Sunday. Enjoy the action, my friends. I'll be back. I will be recording two, Road to 272 Monday night. That'll be out Tuesday morning. I will talk to you then. Gamble or bless.